fun wet fly today. This is called the Beauty. The Beauty is mostly made with guinea hackle. The tail is made from guinea hackle as well as the wing. A number of wet flies do use guinea in the, the production of a fly, but not many of them actually use create wings from match slips from the, the flight feathers. So anyway, I'm a big fan of guinea. I like it. I like flies with a lot of contrast in them. And I think the beauty would actually work really, really well in muddy or off-colored water. The recipe calls for a dark gray floss, but the only dark gray that I had, which I'll show you in the video, I thought was too dark. So I'm going with something a little bit lighter. But that's the beauty. We'll go ahead and get started. start the beauty by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 33.99 in a size 8. I'll debarb the hook and I'll attach my thread. Thread I'm starting with a Danville 6 aught in white. That's because the body of the beauty is made from a floss and I'm using a gray floss. The recipe calls for a dark gray I'm using one that's a little bit lighter. Anyway, I don't want a black thread underneath it to darken up that floss when it is in the water. Run my thread down to about the point of the hook. And I'll tie in the tip on the fly. The tip is just silver tinsel. I'm going to use a Danville Mylar silver and gold tinsel in a size 14. The size 14 is a little bit wider than the 16 and 18 that I'm going to use for the rib. And that's just, I use it simply because I can get the tip wrapped in with fewer wraps because it's a wider tinsel. Put six or seven wraps to get my thread down almost to the barb, but right to the end of the shank. Turn the hook over and then apply my tip. I'll put four wraps in, going down, touching turns, and then four wraps coming back up. Secure that in. And trim away the excess. tail on the beauty is made from uh, guinea hackle. You could use some of the softer hackles if you want. I've taken one of the feathers and I, it doesn't match any of the others that I have and it's also a little bit straighter. The barbs on these are kind of interesting. They're kind of like turkey in that down here at the bottom they have more barbules and they're a little bit thicker but as you get towards the end the barbs themselves will taper but the very ends have very few barbules on them, so they're a little sparser. So it's just my preference. I have the feather here rather than get some soft hackles out or whatnot. I'm just going to take a little slip out here on one side. You could do match slips from both the left and right if you want to. I just take one out that's about the width of the barb, and then I'm just going to fold that over to get the brighter darker side on both sides so it's kind of like a, a pseudo slip as it were i'm going to measure that about a shank length actually i i prefer my tails more or less the length of from the bend of the hook to just behind the eye a little bit longer pinch wrap Secure that in, wrap down to the end of the body. Trim away the excess here so that's the length of the body. Now I'll put my rib in. The rib is going to be a silver tinsel as well. I'm using a Danville Mylar tinsel in a size 16 and 18. 
I'll tie that in with a gold side out so that when I apply it, it will flip over to the silver side. Pull this to the left so that the end of that is the length of the body. One wrap just to hold that in. And then for the body, I'm using a four strand rayon Danville uh, gray floss. As I said, the recipe, original recipe calls for a dark gray. Uni has a uh, floss out that is a, a dark gray, but it is much darker than what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to use this as a little bit lighter gray. And I'm only using two strands of the four strand on a size eight hook or or smaller. I generally will only use two. If I'm going down to even a 14 on this, I may only use just a one strand. I'll secure that in with the end of it, the length of the body. Now you don't have to do this on all of your wet flies and certainly I've done some videos where I don't do this with a floss body. But you can, if you want to try and get a smoother body, you can flatten your thread out. What I've done is I've put a counterclockwise spin on the bobbin and I'm just running the smooth corner of my scissors underneath the thread. Just helps to get that twist out. What this does for me is it broadens that thread out, makes it a little bit flatter. It's easier for me to wrap in and get a, a really nice smooth body. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I like showing different techniques in the various videos that I do for accomplishing certain things. If I were tying a half dozen or so of these to go fishing with, I probably would not do this step. But if I were tying some to frame or to give away or something and I wanted them to look really, really nice, then I probably would throw in this extra step just because, it as you can see, it takes a little time. Every time you wrap your bobbin around here, you're putting in half a clockwise twist as a right-handed uh, tire. So every now and again, you have to stop and counterclockwise twist Flatten your thread out a little bit more. It takes a little bit longer to do it, but it does give you a really, really nice smooth underbody for the body of the fly. So that's in. I'm about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'll go ahead and take my floss. And I'm stroking this out as I come around on that first wrap, as you can see. I have some fibers right here that aren't under the same tension as the rest of them. As I wrap forward, if I just start going over and wrapping and moving forward, those are, those are the ones that are going to spread out. I don't want that. I want them all to stay together. So what I'm going to do is just, as I come around this first wrap, I'm stroking that floss under some tension as it comes around, and that gets all those fibers under the same tension in the same direction. Now by the time I come up here, they're all under the same tension and I can wrap that body in without having those fibers separate. find sometimes, especially this time of year, rough hands with micro hangnails and stuff as you are working that rayon will sometimes tr uh, break some of those fibers in there in the rayon as well as your thread. If you're not careful and you touch your thread, you can have hangnails nick your thread. Just trim those away. Now I can apply the rib. I get one wrap at the back end and then five evenly spaced wraps as I work my way up to my thread. That sixth wrap is going to be right in the, where the head space is at. 
secure that and trim away the excess. And now I'm going to switch over to my black thread. This is also a Danville 6 aught. So I'm about an eye length behind the eye of the hook, and that's where I'll tie in the hackle. The hackle for the recipe, it just calls for a black hackle. I'm going to use a uh, black schloppen. And I'm tying this in as a throat. I think looking at the original picture in Ray Bergman's book, it looks to me as though it's tied in as a throat and not wrapped in as a collar. I'm going to take a little bit of the barbs from each side of the schloppen. So I'm going to peel a little bit off each side, getting the tips of that nice and even. Put those together. I'm going to bring them right up under the hook with the tips just inside the gap of the hook. I like them usually about down to the barb. I'll pinch that and bring a wrap up to secure those. Three or four more wraps, those are secured in. Be careful not to go further down the hook shank as you'll lengthen the head of this fly. Coming forward, I'm going to tie in those butt ends and I'm going to level that up so I have a nice level space for my wing. As I mentioned, the wing on this is made from um, guinea and there's interesting properties on these feathers. As I mentioned with that other one, on this one you have one side where you have the barbs that are thick down here with barbules, but then they taper out and you don't have many barbules out here you can certainly match up the two different sides to make a wing. But on this feather, the other side is it has barbules all the way out to the end, and these are more characteristic of like the duck or, or goose primary feathers. That's what I'm going to use to make my wing. So you want to get a left and right. Make certain you get the tips of those even and we want them the same width. This one's a little bit wider the side facing the camera. So I'm just going to reach in, get a couple of barbs out here. That's what it was. I had a broken one in there. Okay, so I'm going to measure these. I want these to be where the tips go about halfway down the tail or maybe a little bit longer. Using a pinch and loop. Second one, I want to check my placement, make certain that I didn't bind that in too close to the eye of the hook. That looks good. Now, as you can see on camera there, I have a fiber of my thread that as I dragged the thread through my fingers, like I said, those micro hang nails, they just, they'll even shred your thread a little bit. I want to say that three times fast. Trim away the excess. I'm just trying to get that one little piece out because I don't want something just hanging out there when I finish this fly. There we go. So now I'll bring my thread forward and starting down by the eye of the hook.
I'll start shaping the head while securing in the butt ends of the wing. Now only put as many wraps as you need to get the shape you're looking for, the thickness you're looking for, and to cover everything up. Remembering that you're going to have got all kinds of little strays on this fly. Remembering that you're going to have about 10 wraps of thread for your whip finish. So you can use that. In this case, I'm going to flatten my thread. I am spinning the bobbin counterclockwise and using the hook on my whip finish tool just to stroke out the twists and get that nice and flat. What this does for me again, it's going to smooth off the head a little bit. So the head cement that I put on, as well as the lacquer, doesn't have such deep uh, grooves in the thread to fill in. And again, if I were fishing these, I probably wouldn't do this. But if I were framing these or giving these away, this is just a nice little way to give it a little bit of extra attention. As you can see, the head's a little bit smoother by flattening the thread out. Still have some stray threads in here somewhere. There we go. I'll put a little head cement on both sides of the head there. Get these to soak down in there. That really just secures those thread wraps. So even with um, little teeth, a lot of thrashing around, a lot of hits or whatever, that head's gonna last a little bit longer. Plus, I'm gonna put a couple layers of black lacquer on, on that head as well, just to dress it up a little bit and secure it. So there's the beauty. It's just a fun, interesting fly. Working with the guinea, I think, is, is very interesting. Um, I like flies with a lot of contrast. And as I said in the beginning, I think this would be a very good pattern in dark water. Definitely muddy water and off-colored water because you want a dark fly to stand out. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's the beauty. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, Remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.